Welcome to Friday's Devotions. Today we are in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verses 12 to 17. So let's read that together. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. Having just mentioned the gospel in verse 11 there, when Paul had been speaking about the law and bringing people back, he, he brings the gospel and the power of the gospel into that discussion. Paul now shares something in these verses of what the gospel means for him personally and as Paul talks about the gospel he talks about Christ Jesus in verse 12 because Jesus is the gospel Jesus is the saviour not some religion not some theology but the person of Jesus Christ Paul says in verse 12 that God judged me faithful which means God trusted Paul to share the message of Christ Paul speaks of his own life of, of being a zealous religious person it, is, it was one of ignorance and unbelief. He, he says that there in verse 13. He might have looked apart, but it was ignorant. It was unbelieving. But despite this past life, God showed him mercy and showed him grace so that he would be saved. This, the change this brought to Paul was a, a Christianity that was warm because of the faith and love he knew in Christ. Look at that verse 14. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. His Christianity, as opposed to his old religion, it was warm, it was loving, because he experienced Christ and the warmth and the love of Jesus. This is what makes Christianity so real and so special. It is Jesus being real and special in people's lives. And for Paul, each phrase he uses gets more, gets him more and more excited at the grace he's received. Verse 15, he says, The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the uppermost. He goes on, and, But I received mercy for this reason, that me the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example for those who are to believe in him for eternal life. And then verse 17, to the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. It's building up. He's getting more and more thrilled, more and more excited. He just can't control himself. The salvation he's received gives him this longing to burst out in praise to God and to Christ for all that he has done. One of the main reasons for Paul's praise and passion for salvation was his understanding of the dreadful seriousness of of the sin in his life and that comes through these verses he speaks of himself as the foremost of sinners it was an awareness of his sin and then on the other hand his awareness of the greatness of God as spoken there in verse 17 the the king of the ages the God who has ruled over time immortal God the God who can't be killed the invisible God the only God to this God be honour and glory forever and ever Paul has grasped his sin, he's grasped something of the greatness of God and that just amazes him at the salvation that he has received. Does your life overflow with such praise? Does your life have such thankfulness and adoration for Christ? The key to this is saying, yes, our unworthiness, but then to see something of the holiness, the majesty, the glory of our God. It's only when those things come together, awareness of our sin, awareness of the greatness of God, that we see the true wonder 
the true thrill of grace. May grace be real to you. This grace which is God giving to you what you don't deserve and what you can achieve yourself. The salvation that's in Christ alone. Amen.